Hey everyone, I'm Nate Tabor, and I'm a product manager here at AWS focusing on Kubernetes. It was really good to see all of you earlier this morning, and I'm glad you stuck around for this talk. Myself and Ellie Polonsky, my colleague from the AWS CDK team, are going to talk a bit about a new project we've been working on, the CDK for Kubernetes, or CDKs. We're excited to show you the progress we've made in the past few months and demo a few new features that make CDKs even easier to use. Okay, so first, what is the CDK for Kubernetes? Well, we started from the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or a CDK, which is an Amazon project that makes it easy to write YAML files using familiar programming languages. We originally built CDK for CloudFormation, and it helps AWS developers cut thousands of lines of config code and hours of copying and pasting out of their workflows. And we looked at Kubernetes, and we're really familiar with Kubernetes users. We use Kubernetes ourselves. We talk to Kubernetes users all the time. And we saw that the concept of having to write a lot of YAML config files was actually the same problem that our CloudFormation users had faced. And we said, aha, we can do this for Kubernetes users also. And so CDKs was born. CDKs lets you go from code to Kubernetes upstream config in just a few steps. It lets you easily turn the best practices from your team or across your company into code libraries that can be easily shared. And most importantly, and I really mean this is, is one of the most exciting things about the project, is that it's for anyone that uses Kubernetes. CDKs works for any cluster anywhere with any Kubernetes version, and it even supports CRDs. Okay, let's see a little bit more about how this works. To use CDKs, there's a few simple steps. First, using our CLI, import the Kubernetes version that matches your cluster. You can also import any CRDs. Next, use the language that you prefer. Today, we support JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, and we have more languages on the way. And you use these languages to define your application. Just like when you're actually writing the application code, you can use CDKs to define higher level classes against any Kubernetes API object. And this helps you to standardize and abstract common configurations. Next, you're going to run CDK SYNC. This generates a perfectly formatted Kubernetes YAML manifest. In the future, we plan to allow you to even send Helm charts. OK, now you've synthesized into a Kubernetes manifest. You can take that YAML manifest, and you can apply it to your cluster. Here, I'm actually committing to my Git repo, and the manifest will be picked up by Flux and applied to my cluster. But you can also use a kubectl apply command. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's take a look at something that I think is even cooler, CDKs Plus. So with CDKs, we directly translate the Kubernetes API components, allowing you to represent them in code. And while every YAML file you write will define these objects, it's not really how most people who use Kubernetes think about those apps. In reality, each Kubernetes app is a combination of multiple components, and these components need to work together to provide the compute, networking, storage, and configuration parameters that's necessary to function. And that's really the magic of Kubernetes, right? Offering this distributed modular system that can seamlessly knit itself together to perform a task. OK, so how do we make each of these elements easier to define? CDK Plus is a library that helps you abstract the boilerplate and connecting code from your Kubernetes object definitions, letting you just define the most critical, unique components that make up the application logic and automatically implementing the rest. Things like the labels between objects that allow them to connect are automatically populated, as well as things like the API version and other key but not really unique details which enable your application to function properly when it runs. So let's see CDKs in action. Ali, take us away. Thanks, Nate. Hi, everyone. Glad you could join us. My name is Ellie. I'm an engineer on the CDKs team. And today I want to show you what it's like to develop a Kubernetes application using CDKs and CDKs Plus. All right, so just some context. This is the construct catalog. It's essentially a Twitter account that tweets every time a new CDK library is published. Now, today we want to add some search capabilities to it. We want users to be able to query uh, to discover those libraries. OK, so this is my application. Uh, it was generated or initialized using the CDK CLI. 
And you can see there's a main.ts file here, which declares my CDK's chart. And this is where my uh, resources uh, will go. Okay, uh, to implement the, the application, we're gonna use Elasticsearch as the backend. And specifically, we're gonna use the Elasticsearch operator slash custom resource. So to that end, I already have the uh, custom resource definition in my Kubernetes cluster. You can see it here. And what I wanna do is import this definition into my application so I can use it in my TypeScript code. Now to do that, I'm gonna use the CDKates import command, which will read the definition, the schema, the JSON schema, and generate uh, TypeScript code. All right, so let's do it. So we run kubectl get CRD, and we take the Elasticsearch CRD, output it as a JSON, and uh, pipe it to CDKates import. Okay, now we have this Elasticsearch.ts file here. You can see it's pretty big and it contains the entire API spec of the custom resource as TypeScript code. And you can also see that there's this top level Elasticsearch API object here or a resource. And this is what we'll be using. All right, so let's use it. We're gonna do a new Elasticsearch. Uh, you can already see the nice ID completion. I give it a scope and uh, an ID and some properties. So we're gonna give it uh, you can see there are a few uh, um, optional and a few required ones. You can also see a nice inline uh, documentation. So let's start with the version. We're going to use 7.7.1. Uh, we'll configure one node set with a count of one and the name of default. And we also need a few other configuration properties, which I'm just going to paste in so I don't make any uh, mistakes. Okay, I'm also going to disable SSL for now, uh, just because it makes it easier uh, with the demo. So this is how you do it. And also I'm going to explicitly set my service ports. Uh, so I'm going to use the standard, oops, standard Elasticsearch uh, 9200 port. Okay. That's it. That's all I need. Now uh, I can generate my manifest. Sorry. Uh, I do this by running CDKates sin. And let's take a quick look. So this is the manifest. Uh, no big surprises here, right? This is uh, what we expected. And also it has this metadata name here, which was auto generated by the CDKates. So the CDKates will generate a name for every resource that doesn't have a name configured. And this is going to be very useful. Uh, we'll see why later on. All right, uh, let's apply this to the cluster. Okay, uh, let's take a look at our pods. We have one initializing pod, that makes sense. Let's give it a second. Uh, now let's take a look at our service. We have this HTTP service, which we configured with the 9200 port. And you can also see that the service name also has this uh, prefix uh, of the custom resource name, this one. Okay, um, let's see where our pod, pods are. have one running pod, it's still not ready. Let's give it a second or two. All right, cool, it's ready now. I'm also going to uh, index some um, mock data into the cluster just so we'll have something to play with. Uh, so I can do this by running oops, cube cuddle port forward. And I have this uh, curl command ready here. All right, now let's uh, let's move on. So the next thing we want to do is create the, a small proxy service that's basically going to translate user requests into Elasticsearch queries and uh, return the result to the to the user. So I already have this code prepared. It's not super interesting. Uh, the one thing to note here is that I need to pass these three environment variables to it, and this is uh, we're going to have to pass it from the from uh, from the application from the manifest uh, definitions. All right. Uh, so uh, what I want to do now is create the container. Right. I need to create a container and configure the environment variables and uh, and somehow include this query.js file in the container. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use CDKates plus. Now, CDKates Plus is a package which is part of the CDKates uh, tool chain and it contains these high-level intent-based APIs that are based on uh, the low-level uh, core Kubernetes objects, but they make it a lot more easier and, and natural to work with. Now, let me, just, let me just show you what I mean. 
All right, so I'm just gonna import this uh, CDK plus library as K plus uh, from CDK plus, and I'm going to create my container. So I'm gonna do new K plus container. So I need to give it the image. So it's gonna be node 12.18.0 dash stretch specific. Um, and the command is going to be node query dot js, right? And I'm gonna give it a port. And I need to configure the port here as well. So let's just extract this out. Uh, it's gonna be query port. And we're gonna use it here and we're going to use it here. Okay, now I need to um, expose or make this query.ts file available to the container. So I like doing this with config map based volumes and then just mounting the volume onto the container at a specific path. So let's do that. Let's create a, a config map. So I'm gonna do config map, k plus config map, give it a scope and an ID and take a look at its API. So I see that there's this add file API, which is exactly what I need. So I'm gonna use it. And now uh, I need to create the volume, right? So I'm gonna do k plus dot volume from config map. And now I need to mount this volume to the container. So to do that, I'm going to store the container again in constant and take a look at its API. So I can see that there is a container dot mount API, which accepts a path and a volume. And I'm going to need to configure this path also as the working directory of, oops, of my container so that this command will work. Now let's extract this uh, out. Okay, and use it here and use it here. Duplication averted. All right, uh, now I need to configure the environment variables. So to do that, I'm going to use the end key. And let's take a look at which environment variables do I need. So I need the Elasticsearch username, that's easy. Um, it's going to be like a, the standard default uh, username that uh, the custom resource creates. So I'm gonna do k plus dot n value from value, basically just a way to pass a literal string. Uh, the next thing is the Elasticsearch endpoint, which is a little more interesting. It's going to be k plus dot n value, but let's stop here for a second. So the, the endpoint is actually related to the service that we saw before. So let's take a look at it again. <clears throat> this is the HTTP service that I want to uh, hit. So I'm going to have to construct the endpoint using the service name and the service port with the, with the HTTP, of course. So again, I'm gonna do from value, so it's a literal string, it's just a, a, a dynamic one. And here I'm gonna do HTTP. And now I need to uh, have access to this uh, uh, generated name. So to do that, I'm going to store the custom resource oops, in a constant, elastic. And now I can just use this resource dot name uh, and to, to act to get the name and again this dot name will work for any uh, CDK resource even if you don't uh, specify a name on your on, uh, on your own all right so now I just need to append this suffix and I also need to give it the 9200 port and since this is repeating itself also so let's just uh, extract this so it's going to be es port and I'm going to use it here, and I'm going to use it here. All right, next up is the password. So the password uh, is the most interesting one uh, because it's actually stored inside the Kubernetes uh, secret and it's created by the custom resource. So if we take a look at the secrets, uh, this is the secret we need. Uh, and again, you can see that it's prefixed with this uh, resource name, which we already know how to access. So the first thing we need to do is import this secret into our manifest, uh, so to speak. So to do that, we just use the k plus dot secret from secret name. And again, we already know how to create this uh, name just by doing this. Okay. 
And now we can use this secret to create environment variable values. For it. So we do k plus and value from secret. Whoops, yep. Oh, no, from secret. We give it the secret and uh, we give it the specific key inside the secret that actually contains the value. And again, this is the, the documented uh, uh, key. Okay, I think we're ready as far as the container is concerned. Um, the next thing we want to do is just create the deployment. So we do new K plus deployment. We give it a scope and an ID. I'm going to go a little faster here uh, and configure. So just one replica and the pod spec is going to be just my uh, single container. Oops. Container. All right, and now I want to expose this deployment as a service, right? So let's take a look at the API that the deployment resource has. Um, okay, deployment dot. So you can see that there's an expose here, uh, which says expose a deployment via a service equivalent to running kubectl expose. This is perfect. This is what I need. So I'm just gonna give it the port, just uh, port uh, to my uh, Willing. Um, all right. I think that's 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 that should work. So let's generate the manifest and see and see where we are at. So CDKs synth. Let's take a look. All right. So we can see the manifest is much bigger now. Obviously, also because of this inline application code here. Uh, but we can also see that there is the service here, right, and the deployment here, which is great. And also, we can see that uh, these selectors are here, even though we didn't really uh, specify them in the application, right? Here, we didn't have to uh, think about selectors like anywhere. Normally, when you define the YAML, uh, you have to uh, apply labels to the pod, and then you have to apply the selectors or use them as the selector for the deployment, and the same thing for the service. Now, CDK8 Plus actually does that for us. It, it, it interprets our intent. This is what I mean by like intent-based APIs. It, it, assu it assumes that if the pod spec template is defined in the scope of the deployment here, then it makes sense that the deployment will just automatically select uh, the pods in its template. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that, uh, for example, this target port of the service is also kind of implicitly inferred, right? We didn't have to uh, specify this here when we exposed the deployment, because the, the, the information is already here. Um, and also, uh, CDK Plus configured uh, this volume in the pod spec for us. We didn't have to configure uh, the volume here in the pod spec because again, this volume is, is, is attached to this container. So it knows that it needs to be part of the pod spec as well. All right, um, I think we're just about ready to apply this. So let's apply. Let's just do a one quick, uh, quick check to see that uh, everything is configured properly yeah all right so we do cube cuddle apply all right let's take a look at our uh, pods yeah we have one running pod so now comes the moment of truth let's uh, create the port forward and uh, try to hit that uh, endpoint so we do cube cuddle port forward using the service name and uh, the 9000 port that we configured here. And let's hit the endpoint now. Yeah, cool. You can see that uh, this is the CDK, uh, CDK library that we saw before in the, in the catalog. This one, the statics uh, website. And this is what we're, uh, what we're after, uh, obviously uh, building some nice uh, UIs on top of that. All right, so this is uh, what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you can see the potential these kinds of APIs have and uh, how they can really reduce the cognitive load for developers and make it a, nice, a much more uh, friendlier experience. We think it's, it's a cool direction for, for manifest uh, authors. Um, all right, I'm gonna head it over to Nate right now for a quick recap and uh, thanks so much. Bye everyone. Thanks, Ellie. That was a fantastic demo. I really want to thank you for taking the time with us today to learn a little bit more about how CDKs can help you accelerate and standardize development of Kubernetes anywhere. We have big things planned for this project, so 
get involved or follow along on GitHub or at cdkates.io. If you want to check out and, and try the demo that Ellie just showed, we have the link right here and that's on our GitHub. And right now we have a few extra minutes for Q&A.